Welcome back. We're getting better at solving linear systems, but so far we've only discussed systems with a single solution. For example, two lines in R2 that intersect at a single point, or three planes in R3 that intersect at a single point. We know from chapter two that this isn't always the case. Let's investigate the augmented matrices of linear systems that we understand geometrically. In particular, we want to see that linear systems with no solutions or infinitely many solutions can be identified just by looking at their augmented matrices. Let's start by looking at linear systems with no solutions. I think the simplest case is to look in R2. In R2, we know that the lines y equal to 3x plus 2 and y equal to 3x minus 1 are parallel. We know they're parallel because they both have slope 3. Further, we know they don't intersect because they have different y-intercepts. Let's see how we can recognize this in the row reduction process. So first, I think about finding the intersection of the two lines as a linear system of y equals to 3x plus 2 and y equals to 3x minus 1. Here, the equations of the lines are written in y-intercept forms, and we know that in order to use augmented matrices, we need to write the equations in standard form. So the linear system is minus 3x plus y is equal to 2 and minus 3x plus y is equal to minus 1. The first thing we want to do is write down the augmented matrix of the linear system. So we have minus 3, 1, 2, and minus 3, 1, minus 1. I'm not going to follow the Gauss-Jordan algorithm here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recognize that the second row is almost a scalar multiple of the first row. So I'm going to do the row operation, row 2 minus row 1 becomes the new row 2. The first row stays the same, and I have minus 3, 1, 2. And the second row, I do minus 3 minus minus 3, giving me 0. 1 minus 1, giving me 0. And minus 1 minus 2, giving me minus 3. Let's look now at what row 2 says. Row 2 says 0x plus 0y is equal to minus 3. But that means that 0 is equal to minus 3. Yikes, impossible. So how are we going to detect that a linear system has no solutions? Well, we're going to look for the situation where we have zeros on the left-hand side of the dotted line and a minus 3 on the right-hand side. Or really, any number that's not equal to 0 will give us a contradiction. Let's look now at linear systems with infinitely many solutions. We've seen in R3 that the intersection of two non-parallel planes is a line. We know that the planes pi 1, x plus y minus z equal to 2, and pi 2, x plus y plus z equal to 1 aren't parallel since their normal vectors aren't parallel. We can use row reduction to find an equation for the line of intersection. So let's see how that looks. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this these planes and write this as a linear system. The first plane is x plus y minus z is equal to 2, and the second plane is x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So when I make an augmented matrix, I have 1, 1, minus 1, 2, and 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, I already have a 1 in the top left, so my first row operation will be to use that one in the top left to clear out below in the second row. So I'll do row 2 minus row 1 goes to row 2. And I have, the first row stays the same, and the second row, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus minus 1 is 2, and 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Now I can scale the I'll scale the second row, doing the row operation uh, 1 half row 2 becomes the new row 2, giving me 1, 1, minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, minus 1 half. So already I know that the z variable has to be equal to minus 1 half. Okay, here I'll use the leading one in the second row to clear above it. So I'll do the row operation, row one plus row two is the new row one. 
this gives me 1, 1, 0. 2 minus a half is 3 halves. And the second row stays the same. 0, 0, 1, minus 1 half. So this now is in reduced row echelon form. Let's read off row 1 gives me the equation x plus y is equal to 3 halves. And row 2 gives me the equation z is equal to minus 1 half. OK, so let's look here. The z is a fixed number, but something interesting is happening between the x and the y. Well, if I picked an x value, that would force a y value to me. Like if I picked x equal to 0, that would tell me that y is equal to 3 halves. On the other hand, if I picked a y value, like y equal to 1, that would tell me that x had to be 1 half. But the point is, until I pick either x or y, I don't know what the other variable has to be equal to. So what we'll do is I'll rewrite this as x is equal to 3 halves minus y and z is equal to minus 1 half. So this gives me a relationship between the variables, but somehow something feels a bit incomplete. So really, the convention is to call any variable that isn't associated to a leading entry a free variable. We're going to assign a parameter to each of the free variables. So here, it's the y that'll let be the free variable. And when I do that, what I'll do is I'll fill in and I'll say, OK, well, I'm going to set y is equal to t. That's the free variable. t could be any real number which means that I could rewrite this equation x is equal to 3 halves minus y as x is equal to 3 halves minus t. And so finally, I can organize my solution like I like to do. And I have x is equal to 3 halves. Let me clean that up. x is equal to 3 halves minus t. y is equal to t and z is equal to minus 1 half, where t is any real number. So why does this mean that we have infinitely many solutions? Well, it means that we have infinitely many solutions because I can pick t to be any real number. Once I pick a t value, for example, t equal to 0, then I know that x would be equal to 3 halves, y would be equal to 0, and the z is always fixed at minus 1 half. But because I have infinitely many choices of t, that means that I have infinitely many choices of x, y, and z. And you can also remember that this is exactly the same form that we had for a parametric equation of a line inside of 3-space. We'll use the leading one in the second row to clear above. Using the elementary row operation, row 1 plus row 2 becomes the new row 1, giving me 1, 1, 0. 2 minus a half is 3 halves, 0, 0, 1, and minus 1 half. Let's read off now what each of these rows tells us. From row 1, we have that x plus y is equal to 3 halves. And from row 2, I have that z has to be equal to minus 1 half. So the row 2 information that z is equal to minus 1 half is exactly like we've gotten before. But the equation x plus y equals to 3 halves is a little bit different. For example, if I pick an x value, like 0, then that would tell me that y has to be equal to 3 halves. On the other hand, if I picked a y value, say 1, that would force the x value to be 1 half. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this equation from row 1, and I'm going to rewrite it as x is equal to 3 halves minus y. The convention is to call any variable that isn't associated to a leading entry a free variable. So when I think about the variables in this, in this linear system that I had, I had the column associated to x, 
I had the column associated to Y, and I had the column associated to Z. Notice that there's a leading entry in the X column, and there's a leading entry in the Y column. So because there's no leading entry in the Y column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set Y to be equal to some parameter T, where T could be any real number. When I do that, I keep Z the same, minus 1 half. And now notice that I can rewrite the first equation I can rewrite the first equation as 3 halves minus t. Now this looks exactly like something that we've seen in chapter 2. In particular, it's the parametric equation of a line. So just to organize our final answer, we have x is equal to 3 halves minus t, y is equal to t, and z is equal to minus 1 half, where t is going to be a real number.